Welcome to module 2. This is where we get to answer the question, who is going to do all this and when? You and your team have dedicated a lot of time and effort to developing a well-conceived strategic plan. This plan, which we reviewed in module 1, focuses your team's efforts geographically, spatially and or thematic. Through the plan, you make many decisions based on prioritization processes. Now you are at a point to put that plan into action. Your first step is to get more specific about who is going to do what and when. In other words, to develop a work plan. In this module, you will learn what a work plan is, why work plans are important for managing a conservation project, the tasks involved in making a work plan, and the difference between a high-level and detailed work plan. This module focuses on a high-level plan. We keep this at a high level for now because this is your first attempt to translate all your planning into action. By the end of this module, you will be able to demonstrate the following skills and competencies. Identify and prioritize strategies based on a situation model. List the basic elements of a good work plan. Describe the difference between a high level and detailed work plan and when you should use each. Use products from steps one and two of the conservation standards to develop a high-level work plan. And use a work plan to determine if anyone on your team is overcommitted and if you need to hire or contract new individuals. The end of the previous module left you at an important juncture. You now have a plan in hand and are ready to start your journey towards implementing it. In building your plan, your team clarified what you're trying to conserve and the context affecting your conservation targets. You used your understanding of that context to identify and prioritize the actions you should take, and to clarify how you think those actions will help you achieve your conservation goals. With this foundation laid, you are now ready to dive into the on-the-ground planning and action. Let's see where we're at in our conservation standards cycle. In the previous module, we reviewed steps one and two of the conservation standards, in which you assessed and clarified the context in which your project is operating and you planned the actions and monitoring that you need to do to affect your conservation situation. Now we are at step 3, the implementation portion of the cycle. And as we said, this module focuses on developing a work plan. In particular, it focuses on a high-level plan as this is our first attempt at translating all our planning into action. So, what are we trying to accomplish in step 3? This step involves developing a work plan and timeline, as I just mentioned, since this is our first pass, we want to keep these at a high level. Step 3 also involves developing a budget, again we will also keep this high level. Here we will also analyze and refine both our work plan and budget. We will determine what is feasible and meaningful given our likely resources. This involves making tough decisions about eliminating, postponing, or scaling back strategies. And finally, we will implement our refined plans. Obviously, work plans and budget are key to putting our strategies into action. But what's the difference between a work plan and a budget? A work plan is where you use your strategies, activities, and monitoring activities to get specific about who will do what when. You could think of it as a sophisticated version of your to-do list. Your budget builds off of your work plan, and it is the place where you think about what is this all going to cost us. It typically includes the cost of the people carrying out the strategies, as well as any additional expenses associated with doing so. To illustrate, let's say you had a strategy or intervention to make a cup of coffee. Your work plan and associated timeline might specify that you will buy the coffee at 7.30 in the morning when you go to the market. You will grind the beans at 8.30 and boil the water at 8.35. You will pour the water over the ground beans at 8.40. At 8.40 you will also get out the cream and sugar. The coffee will steep and be ready for drinking at 8.45. From start to finish you have now spent 1.25 hours in making your cup of coffee. This 1.25 hours is your overall level of effort. The specific actions to make the coffee, your level of effort, and the timing of your actions collectively are your work plan and timeline for your coffee strategy. 
Next, we can use this information to estimate our costs, in other words, our budget. But we'll tackle that in the next module. At this point, we recommend your work planning and budgeting happen at a course or high level. But what do we mean by high level? We mean that you should focus only on major activities. Don't try to list every last activity or task you might need to do. Also, aim for rough estimates by year, unless, of course, your overall project is very short in duration. Our intent at this point is to get a general sense of level of effort. You may be wondering why shouldn't we be more precise? Well, to implement our strategies, we need a general sense of the level of effort involved and the costs as well as likely funding. Also, we don't want to waste time on being precise if we'll need to adjust our overall plan to match our likely staffing and funding. If we go back to our coffee example, let's say you only had 15 minutes to prepare your coffee and you did not have any beans. You would want to know this information before you spend a bunch of time work planning and budgeting for your cup of coffee. If you can pull together this high-level information more quickly, you will know right away that you need to come up with a different plan for getting your coffee. Or abandon your coffee strategy altogether. Okay, so let's get back to the drawing board and get into the details of developing a high-level work plan. This involves three main steps. First, we'll review our suite of strategies and refine them if needed. With this full suit in mind, we'll then want to clarify the time frame for the overall project and the work plan itself. Finally, we will estimate the level of effort. As you'll see later, we have a few options for doing that. Reviewing our strategies means going back to our situation model or our list of strategies and thinking critically about whether we need to make any adjustments. First, you might ask, do I have the strategies to address all my high-ranked threats? Looking at the marine example, it seems most of the high-rated threats do have strategies associated with them. However, increased storm intensity is an important threat to coral reefs. Your team cannot expect to reduce this threat, but you could help the coral reefs be more resilient to it by doing reef rehabilitation. So perhaps you can add this as a strategy to consider. You should also look at the indirect threats and opportunities and see if there are any critical factors, also called contributing factors, that are not being addressed. Here you can see that the team has not identified any strategies to focus on weak law enforcement or its drivers. So perhaps you want to add a strategy to strengthen law enforcement. Finally, you can step back and look at the full suite of strategies and see if they work well as a single project in your context. In this case, the team decided not to pursue reef rehabilitation because it was outside of their expertise and they know another highly effective organization is already starting up reef rehabilitation activities. Great, so we're done reviewing our strategies and interventions and refining them. Now we'll work on specifying the time frame. This is from the Miradi's work plan view. As we mentioned earlier, you could use other applications like Excel for work planning and budgeting, but in this course, we use Miradi. As discussed previously, because we are doing work planning at a high level, we do not want to get too detailed or fine-grained. Usually, planning at an annual level is sufficient. At this point, you should also think about how far out you are planning. This may be influenced by many factors, such as institutional planning cycles and donor grant making cycles. Generally, you can probably produce a rough but good work plan three or even five years out. Beyond that, it becomes increasingly difficult to predict needed levels of effort. Now, let's focus on estimating the level of effort by year for each strategy. There are a couple of options. You can do this as an activity level estimate or a strategy level estimate. For an activity level estimate, you identify who should be involved in each activity and the time needed. You can sum up all activities across a strategy to know what the total effort for the strategy is. Alternatively, for a strategy level estimate, you would simply estimate level of effort at the overall strategy level. If you like, you could specify who would be involved, but you would not have to figure out their time for each activity. So
So when would you want to do an activity level based estimate and when would you want to do a strategy level estimate? Well, let's start with the activity level. You would use an activity level estimate if you don't have a good sense of what the level of effort for the strategy will be. And because of this, you want to better define what the strategy will involve. You may also do an activity level estimate if you want an idea of how busy specific staff will be. At an activity level, it can be easy to assign specific staff and start to get a sense of their commitments. So how do you do this? To plan your work at an activity level, you can start by identifying the people who will be involved. In this case, Anna and Elena will be responsible for implementing the outreach campaign. And next, we want to know how much time is needed to implement the activity. We can specify that time by year, as the team did here. In this case, Anna will spend five days in 2017 and three days in 2018 while Elena will spend two days in 2017 and 2018. Adding up the numbers, we can see that total effort for 2017 is seven days and for 2018 is five days. You can also add up the numbers to get a sense of the total effort by person and then finally by activity. Once you have all the activity level estimates, you can then add the activities together to calculate the estimated costs for the strategy. So again, work planning at this level of detail is useful if you need to think through each activity to understand what is involved in carrying out the overall strategy and if you want a sense of staff commitment. For understanding staff commitment in particular, it is important to assign time by person and by year or whatever time frame makes sense for your situation. In some cases, however, you may just want to estimate how much time an activity will take. In these cases, you may skip identifying the specific persons and just do the summary by year or at the overall activity. You will have to determine what works best for your situation and your planning needs. Be sure you are including time in your budget for monitoring activities associated with your strategies, as well as your threats and conservation targets. Monitoring is a key part of adaptive management, but it takes time. You want to make sure you allocate the time needed to do it sufficiently. So we have just walked through an example of how you would do an activity level estimate. Now let's move on to doing strategy level estimates. Sometimes your team may want to do a high-level, quick and dirty estimate at the strategy level. You might use this type of strategy level estimate if you have a good sense of what level of effort is needed. Perhaps you have a lot of experience implementing a strategy and you know its rough costs. Or maybe it's a strategy you plan to contract out and you have reliable quotes from different contractors. In these cases, it may not make sense to plan at the activity level because you can make a reliable estimate at the strategy level. You may also do a strategy level estimate if you are not sure who will be working on the strategy or you don't need to know specific time commitments. So how do you do a strategy level estimate? Well, in general, you do not worry about specifying the staff because you are simply estimating at the strategy level. I say that, but I do want to clarify that if you did want to keep a general idea of staff commitments, you could assign overall levels of effort to different staff persons at the strategy level. If you know it, you can estimate how much effort is required by year. For example, here you can see that the sustainable ocean fishery strategy will require some minimal startup effort in 2017, but the level of effort will increase dramatically in the second and third years of the project. At the coarsest level, you may just estimate the effort as a total number of hours or days over the entire time frame. Here, the 950 figure is the sum of the time required from 2017 to 2019. Even when you do work planning at the strategy level, you should make sure that you are including monitoring costs, whether they are wrapped into your strategy level estimate or whether you include them as a separate item in your work planning. I have one final word that we will cover more when we get to the budget module uh, and that is you may find that you are unsure of level of effort or you don't wish or need to specify that. But you may have a sense of the overall costs. For example, 
maybe you are contracting out a strategy. And because the contractor is not part of your staff, you would not need to plan his or her time. In these types of situations, you may leave your work planning fields blank and enter the total costs at the time you do your budgeting. This, by the way, is what the view could look like in Excel, for example. So work planning is important for helping you clarify what needs to be done and for later developing a budget based on your estimated level of effort. But it's also important to use work planning to get a sense of whether your project team members are under or over programmed. For this example project, most staff are expected to work 235 days per year. Under this parameter, we can see that none of the staff are over programmed at this point. But let's say that the team spends some more time developing their work plan and assigning work days. Perhaps they allocate some of the to be determined time to Elena and Jose, two of the key staff for this project. You can now see that Elena is over-programmed and depending on what other commitments Jose might have with other projects, he may be overcommitted too. Using your work planning data to get a sense of your team's workload is a very important part of the process. It can help you identify where you need to adjust workloads and where you need to hire more support. As you do this, be sure to keep in mind that some team members may be working on multiple projects. So you will want to look at work plan data across these projects to get a sense of their proposed commitments. Also keep in mind that you should keep a buffer to allow staff time for administrative work or general business not directly tied to their project work. You can check with your human resource staff to see what buffer would be appropriate. But as a general rule of thumb, 10 to 20% of their time is a reasonable estimate. So that takes us through the main steps of developing a high-level work plan. Next up, for the technical content, we'll learn how to use this high-level work plan to develop a high-level budget. But let's take a few more minutes to have a look at how these steps are done in Mirati. A note regarding Mirati, in this course we are using Mirati for our work planning and budgeting but Mirati is not the only program in which these could be done. You could, for example, use Microsoft Excel or any other similar software. If you are using Mirati, you can set the time frame by going to the work plan view and selecting the settings tab. Here you will have space to enter your project's dates and your work plan dates. When you are doing a high level work plan, these are probably the same dates as you're trying to do a rough work plan for your whole project. Once you get funding and you start to implement your project, you will want to do work planning over a shorter time frame and possibly in more detail. You can add people, which may include staff, consultants and even groups of people, their rates and other relevant information under the People tab. Under the Work Plan tab at the far left, you will get a table. You can customize the table to show the fields you want. Here you see the fields we showed for work planning, as well as projected expenses and budget totals. Two fields that you will learn more about in the next module on budgeting. You can assign people to strategies or activities. To do so, click on the activity or strategy in the upper pane. In our case, here it is the Shark 1 activity, and go to the People tab in the bottom frame. Here, you can add people. You can then use the fields in the table to add numbers. In Mirati, blue numbers can be edited. Black numbers are rolled up values calculated by Mirati. These cannot be directly edited unless you remove the lower level entries. You can find more support for Mirati at mirati.org and on the Mirati YouTube channel. That concludes this module on high-level work planning. Thanks for joining and we look forward to continuing the conversation as we move to high-level budgeting in our next module.